This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. I don't know. I, when I was a kid, I always had this, this dream of becoming a crime fighter, but there was never any call for it. I always wanted to be on a, a stallion overlooking the Long Island Expressway with, you know, with my hair blowing back fighting crime. It just didn't work. No, there aren't too many guys around on stallions looking over the Long Island <laughs> Expressway, Expressway with their hair blowing in the wind. Except at night. Hi, I fight crime. <laughs> Viewer discretion is advised. Schmack him a gub. Ace freely rules. Schmackamagob, it's time for the news, and I want to thank John Mateo for that killer Schmackamagob intro, ripping to shock me, killer stuff, John, thank you so much. Anybody wants to be on the intro to the news, send it to this email right here, and I will put it up in the order I receive them. Now it's time for the only news that matters. Jeff Tate was asked how critical Queensryche was in pioneering the progressive metal movement. He said, well, I'll put it this way. There wasn't a progressive metal genre before us. Well, in my opinion, and don't get me wrong, I love me some early Queensryche, and yes, they were pioneers in the, that movement. But Rush is not really known as a metal band because of the twists and turns they did in the 80s with the keyboards. But man, well into that early Rush, songs like Cygnus X1 and 2112. It's just as heavy and metal than anything Queensryche did. My favorite Queensryche song is Roads to Madness, which is very progressive, and it has elements of metal. But so did Cygnus X1, Necromancer. I mean, there's a lot of early Rush stuff that was, man. When I was a kid, that shit was called metal. You look at those old Cream Circus magazines, they level, labeled bands like ACDC and Rush and, you know, there's a lot of bands that now, you know, as time gone by, they're not considered metal anymore. But when I was a kid, it was metal. And when I still listen to Cygnus X1 and, you know, Temple of Syrix and stuff like that, it's metal as hell. And if you want to bring up, oh, well, Queensryche has Queen of the Reich and Night Rider. Well, that's not really progressive. I mean, neither was Anthem and Bastille Day. And that was heavier, or as heavy as those songs. When I was a kid, that was metal. And get off my lawn! So, I'm just going to disagree a little bit with G Off from Queensryche. Well, ex-Queensryche singer. Next story! When Warrant found fame with their 1989 single, Heaven, it helped them land a support slot on Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood tour, and had the young band members feeling good about themselves. Warrant wanted to seize the moment to act like they were in the big time. But as band members Joey Allen and Steven Sweet recall, in the new book, Nothing But A Good Time, they picked the wrong time to act up. His feeling proved to be prolific. The headliners were famously engaged in an attempt to clean up their own act. So Warrant's attempts to live out the rock star dreams were unwelcome. I remember one time we fucking trashed our dressing room in some city, guitarist Allen said. The next day we walked into our dressing room and there was no catering, no beer, no nothing. And Tommy Lee came into our room with a plate and he had shit on it. And he goes, here, I heard you guys were hungry. Here you go. The cruise drummer point was made. I don't know if they ended up paying the bill for us or if they got shit for it, but it was kind of like... Don't do that, Alan recalls. That's funny shit, right? Because it could have been, look, we're clipping 10 minutes off your set. You don't get any lights or sound. Whatever the reason behind Lee's move, Sweet said, honestly, those guys in the crew never stop partying. I just think they stopped doing heroin. I find that pretty vile how Tommy Lee went in there with a plate of shit. I mean, the only thing that could be worse if today Tommy Lee would come in uh, with a plate with his new album on it. All right, next. Well, wait a second. I've just been given a note here. 
Oh my god. Holy crap. Gird your loins, everybody. This is a special report. This is a special report. This just in. All you kiss stars out there that get upset with me talking about Paul Stanley of Kiff. Saying that I'm not a KISS fan and that they're part of the army and you better stop talking about Paul. This lady here just found your banky. This has been a special report. Alright, next story. Paul Stanley of KIF is still a hypocrite and his voice is shot. How do you like those apples, you KISS tards? Next story. Tony Iommi for Black Sabbath was asked about the Forbidden album said that we've read a while ago that there was a remix session going on for that record. Is that something that is in discussion for coming out soon as well? And Tony replied, we will do that once we get to the Tony Martin period. At the moment, we're doing the Dio stuff, which I really been looking forward to because that era really pleases the fans. It's unfortunate that over the years, Tony Martin has been buried in all this Ozzy and Dio stuff and everything. There will be a period now where we'll be able to release a box set with the Tony Martin albums with some good outtakes as well. I've already mixed it here at home, so that's all ready to go. But we have to wait until the time is right. We can't put all these things out together. It would cause confusion. And to be honest, I got boxes and boxes of stuff that probably never been heard. Even I can't remember it all. It's just a matter of rolling through it and finding it all. That's amazing news. I am a huge Tony Martin era fan of Sabbath, and I'm not alone. Yeah, I know there's people that don't like it, but man, there's many of us that love that stuff. And I've owned forever all the Tony Martin stuff on CD that's been long out of print and costs a lot of money now. But to think that's all coming out on vinyl and a box set, awesome. And I've already seen a lot of rumblings like, Oh my God, I can't wait, I can't wait. Well, you're going to have to wait. You know, this is going to take a while, people. It'll be many years before we see that Tony Martin era box set. But boy, when it's there, I'll be getting it. I'm first day buyer. I'm first day pre-order. Can't wait. Awesome news. All right, next story. In a recent interview with Elton John, he said, I've done something with Metallica. During this lockdown period, I've been working with a lot of bands virtually like the gorillas and people like that i haven't been doing any elton stuff but i've been doing great stuff with other people it's not clear what project with metallica elton was referring to but earlier this year miley cyrus said her upcoming metallica covers album will feature elton john playing piano on her version of nothing else matters um wow <laughs> So far, I haven't liked anything Metallica has done where, they, you know, when he's, they've collaborated with Lady Gaga or uh, Lou Reed and all that stuff. So, you know, uh, but I am not the type to judge something before it comes out like many people do. Check the comments below. I'll wait to hear it to pass judgment on it. But I love Elton John and I love Hardwired in the first three Metallica albums, so... But the jury's out till it comes out. Next story. Wolfgang Van Halen released two more new songs for his next album. Now, the first song he released, uh, Distance, about his dad. Well, he wrote it while his dad was alive, but, you know, then he dedicated it to his dad. Wasn't a, really a fan of it, but I loved the sentiment. And I loved even more how so many people loved it. Then the next song he released, I didn't like either. I did like the guitar solo. It was cool. Well, now he released two more. So I clicked on the first song, and I was like, oh, this ain't good. Then the second one, which he made a video for where, you know, he plays every instrument. So the video has Wolfgang playing drums, bass, guitars, and singing all together. I was blown away how much I loved it. I thought it was awesome. And a lot of people do too. Yeah, of course, I saw some criticism. But I loved it. I thought it was a great, great song. And I loved the video. And, you know, of course, there's people out there that are going to make fun of his weight. Not me. I'm like, man, 
I like them chubby. Stay that way. Who cares? I don't care. I got two words for Wolfgang Van Halen. Manja, manja. Next story. Tomorrow here on the Almost Human channel, I will be interviewing Damien, who is the creator of Inside the Casbah. And we will be talking about that. And also, we'll be talking about this threatening message I got yesterday where somebody is threatening to sue me if I put this up. It'll all be talked about tomorrow. And tomorrow, you can also see the Inside the Casbah 2020 revamp where I narrate it. So tune in tomorrow and check out what Damien has to say about this whole mess and the Inside the Casbah and all the things he has to do with it. All right, let's go into the final story. According to Dateline, Sharon Osbourne is exiting the CBS show The Talk following her emotional defense of pal Piers Morgan's criticism of Meghan Markle. After completing an internal probe into the situation, the network released a statement saying that Osborne decided herself to depart the show. The statement reads, The event of the March 10th broadcast were upsetting to everyone involved, including the audience watching at home. As part of our review, we conclude that Sharon's behavior toward her co-host during the March 10 episode did not align with our values for a respectable workplace. We also did not find any evidence that CBS executives orchestrated the decision of blindsiding any of the hosts. At the same time, we acknowledge the network and studio teams as well as the showrunners are accountable for what happened during the broadcast as it was clear the co-hosts were not properly prepared by the staff for a complex and sensitive discussion involving race. So this wicked witch of Oz buckled under the pressure and left the show instead of fighting it. And she's known as such a tough woman. She's been served with a cold plate of karma. <laughs> All right, my friends, that's it for the news this week. Hey, check out my podcast, Vieira Vault, and the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. Yes, I'm back on the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. And if you'd like to donate, I got a PayPal below. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to live. Stay frosty, my friends, and smack them a gob. The news this week was brought to you by Inside the Casbah 2020 that will premiere tomorrow on YouTube. And I'm going to have tomorrow, here on the Almost Human channel, interview with the creator of Inside the Casbah, Damien Vigonis, and we will be talking about, you know, all that went into the Inside the Casbah and We'll also be talking about this person that threatened to sue me. That's some wacky, kooky stuff. So tune in tomorrow and check out the details. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain.